ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथोचय मुदीर ये मुखम कौति वल पंगु लंगयते गिरी जत्क्रीपातम वंदे श्रीगुरु दिनता परमानंदमादावाम श्री चैतन्यमीश्वरा नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्णा प्रेस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदंता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चातियादेशिणे वंचाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअदादर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो टू दे वी रीड एंड डिस्कस फ्रॉम सेवेंथ कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम चैप्टर टेन प्रहलाद द बेस्ट अमॉन्ग के सोल्ट दिवोतीस वर्स नंबर इलेवन श्री भगवाच नैकंति नो मे मयि जद्वी जद्वी का शिषा आशा सते मुत्र चये भवत्द तथा मन्वंतर मे तथात्र दैत्यस्वराणुभुष्वगाच नैकंति नो मे मयि जाशिषा अशा सते मुत्र चये भवत्द तथा मन्वंतर मे तदात्र दैत्यस्वराणुभुष्वगाच नैकंति नो मे मयि जाशिषा आशा सते मुत्र चये भवत्द तथा मन्वंतर मे तदात्र दैत्यस्वराणुभुष्वगाभुपाट्सलेशन एंड पर्पुर श्री भगवाच द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड कैथ सैथ ना नॉत एकांति ना अनलोयत विथआउट डिसायर्स एक्सेप्ट फॉर द वन डिसायर फॉर द इमोशनल सर्विस 
me from me maye unto me jato anytime iha within this material world ashisha benedictions ashasate intent desire amutra in the next life cha and ye all such devotees who bhavat vidaha like you tatapi still manvantaram the duration of time until the end of the life of one manu etat this atra within this material world daitya ishvara nam of the opulences of materialistic persons anubhungsva you can enjoy bhogan all material opulences translation the supreme personality of god cat said my dear pralat a devotee like you never desires any kind of material opulences either in this life or in the next nonetheless i order you to enjoy the opulences of the demons in this material world acting as they are king until the end of the duration of time occupied by manu purpur one manu lives for a duration of time calculated to be an aggregate of 71 yuga cycles each of which equals 4,300,000 years although a theistic man like to enjoy material opulences and they endeavor with great energy to build big residences roads cities and factories unfortunately they cannot live more than 80 90 or at the utmost 100 years although the materialist the materialist exerts so much energy to create a kingdom of hallucinations he is unable to enjoy to enjoy it for more than a few years however because pralad maharaj was a devotee the lord allowed him to enjoy material opulence as the king of the materi- materialist pralad maharaj had taken birth in the family of hiranyakashipu who was the topmost materialist and since pralad was the bona fide heir of his father the supreme lord allowed him to enjoy the kingdom created by his father for so many years that no materialist could calculate them a devotee does not have to desire material opulence but if he is a pure devotee there is ample opportunity for him to enjoy material happiness also without personal endeavor therefore everyone is advised to take to devotional service under all circumstances if one desires material opulence he can also become a pure devotee and his desires will will be fulfilled it is stated in shrimad bhagavatam 2310 akama sarva kama va moksha kama udaradi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param whether one desires everything or nothing 
or whether he desires to merge into the existence of the Lord. He is intelligent only if he worships Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by rendering transcendental loving service. Verse and translation again. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Naikanti no me Majijat Vihashi sa Asha sate mutra chaye pavat vidaha Tatapi manvantara meta datra Taitishvaranam Anubungshva bogan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Prahlad, a devotee like you never desires any kind of material opulences, either in this life or in the next. Nonetheless, I order you to enjoy the opulences of the demons in this material world, acting as their king until the end of the duration of time occupied by Manu. Many people want something and never get it. And some people do not want something or anything and they get it. And this is the condition of pure devotees of the Lord, uh, Shuddha Bhaktas, like Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj didn't want any kingdom. You may remember from the previous verses, those of you who listened to the previous lectures, uh, how the Lord offered Prahlad Maharaj a blessing, whatever he wanted to take. And can you imagine if Krishna comes to you and asks, uh, ask me anything you want. Put yourself on that position. What, uh, anything you want. Uh, of course, we will normally, now we will, among devotees, we will give the standard answer, isn't it? We will say, yes, I will ask only pure devotional service. I won't ask anything else. But we will have to see that that will come when the situation really happens to us. It is very easy to be a saint theoretically, but to be a saint practically it's not that easy. Like we heard this morning in Sri Prabhupada's quote, Prabhupada was uh, playing with the words and in a very clear way. He was saying, one can be a cheater instead of a teacher. And, and, and basically the main point Sri Prabhupada was making, it is about the behavior and the attitude, which, what makes a teacher or a a true preacher. It is not just the what I say. It is very easy to speak in one way. In one way it's easy to speak. But to, to do is more difficult. Therefore Srila Prabhupada will say that example is better than precept. Uh, of course we are meant to do the two. Achar and prachar. Achar means proper behavior, sadachar, good behavior. And prachar means to speak the message of God, the message of Krishna, for the benefit of other, other, other souls, other people. And also, firstly, for our own benefit. By speaking the message of Krishna, we, firstly, we become purified. So we are the first benefited. And therefore, Srila Prabhupada emphasized that the Krishna consciousness movement is a movement of Goshtianandis. Goshtianandis means that the devotees take pleasure in the Sangha, in the Sadhu Sangha of the devotees, and, increase, and in increasing. Shri Shri Gauranitai, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram, Shri Shri Radha Shyamasundara Ki Jai. Devotees take pleasure in increasing the number of devotees. 
I, I did read from senior Vaishnavas that Sri Lanka, I couldn't track the, the primary reference for where did Sri Lanka Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur stated it. If anyone knows, I'll be happy to listen to the source because I'm searching for it. It has been quoted by, by some uh, senior Vaishnavas and therefore I'm either to quote it. Uh, but I couldn't track the exact source that uh, one should be a bhajan, a, 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 a devotee in the Krishna consciousness movement should be a bhajan anandi who preaches. So bhajan anandi means we should take pleasure in our in the practice of sadhana, in the practices of devotional service. But then we are meant to preach it. Other, otherwise, <coughs> if we keep it only for ourselves, it won't be sufficient or we won't be fulfilling the instruction given by the Lord. Like the Lord here is telling Prahlad Maharaj, he has an instruction for him. Prahlad Maharaj tells the Lord, I do not want any blessing. And if you insist in giving me a blessing, okay, I, I pray that I will never develop material desires. I don't have any desire, but if you want to, ins if you insist, I, I, I do not want ever have desires, meaning material desires, kama. And devotees by nature, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Srila Rupa Goswami, are peaceful. In Rupa Shiksha, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Atayeva Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Shakali Ashanta. That devotees of the Lord, pure devotees, it's understood, it's Shuddha Bhaktas, pure devotees of the Lord, they are very peaceful. They are very peaceful and it is connected. They do not have any desires. That meaning any personal desires. They just want to serve the Lord. Like Prahlad Maharaj in previous verses told the Lord, you are the master, I am the servant. That's it. And keep it like that always. Don't, please my Lord, please don't make it different. You are the master, I am the servant. As Srila Prabhupada will put it sometimes, God is great, God is big, and we are very small, we are insignificant. And we don't need to do anything else, just remain like that and be happy offering service. When we do that, then we remain peaceful. Our heart is very peaceful. And the peace is natural, a natural foundation for happiness, peaceful and happy. Of course, devotees do not necessarily want to become happy. Like I remember in one occasion when the, the Sri Sri Krishna Balaram Mandir was being built, and some of you may know the details better than me because you live here and you may read more as, uh, uh, about it. Uh, the cement, the concrete, was very difficult to obtain and was being stolen. And Srila Prabhupada was actually anxious about it. And one of his secretaries, I forgot who, who was the disciple who told Srila Prabhupada that, uh, encouraged Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada was not eating and couldn't even sleep properly. Was somewhat disturbed. So apparently he was not peaceful. And of course, he was peaceful inside, but externally, he was disturbed because the service of the Lord was, be, was being hampered. He wanted to offer this wonderful temple for Sri Sri Krishna Balaram and Sri Sri Radha Shema Sundar, and rascals were coming to steal the concrete. And the devotee tried to encourage Sri Prabhupada, yes, please translate or uh, eat. Uh, take rest. And Srila Prabhupada said, how do you want me to be, 
to to be uh, peaceful when they are stealing the temple concrete. So the body is ready to take any anxieties for the pleasure of the Lord, and that's part of the peace formula. It appears a contradiction, but actually all contradictions are reconciled in relation to Krishna. Krishna is biggest than the biggest, and the smallest than the smallest. And pure devotees of the Lord, also they are the most peaceful, they are Shanta, but they can take the greatest anxiety than anyone for the Lord. And they remain peaceful. Inside they are peaceful. Outside there appears to be some disturbance because things are happening. When we, when we go deep into our eternal relationship with Krishna, into the Sambandha, the connection to Krishna within our heart, it is like being going under the ocean. Even if there are waves outside, things are happening outside. There may be many disturbances in our service. We may, we may be, be having headaches, indigestion, some, even some, you could say, even some stress, stress for Krishna. Still, inside, the heart remains peaceful. Like uh, the, there was a picture of Srila Prabhupada in America where he looked like with a very serious semblance. And when the body, uh, when disciple asked Srila Prabhupada, uh, Srila Prabhupada, here you look like a bit concerned or morose. And Srila Prabhupada said, not here, it was not like that, here I was experiencing transcendental joy, transcendental happiness. But externally, he appeared to be morose. Like we, we read in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in, in his anti Alila, when his transcendental body will become transformed, sometimes his bodily limbs will become elongated, sometimes will, be, will become compressed, the, from his body will ooze blood. Uh, and the bodies were, and he was totally unconscious. They couldn't recognize him. And the bodies were crying. Were crying intensely because they thought, what's happening to our Lord? What's happening? And then they will perform kirtan to, kirtan to bring the Lord back. And when the when the Lord will come back, he will ask, why, where, where am I? Why have you brought me here? I was in Vrindavan Dam. I was experiencing many transcendental pastimes. I know, I know you brought me here again. So externally, it may appear that the devotee is not uh, happy, is not peaceful, is having great anxieties for the service of the Lord, for serving the mission of the Lord, but internally devotees experience transcendental joy. This is the nature of devotional service. On the other hand, a materialist may appear very happy uh, drinking and, and dancing with drugs and having a great a material party, very, very happy, but internally, uh, normally speaking, the materialist is feeling miserable. This is the condition, because the soul cannot be happy. Bukti mukti siddhi kami, shakali ashanta. As long as we have desires for bukti, sense enjoyment, mukti, liberation from material existence, we want to get free from the anxiety. We want to sit very peacefully in one place. Sometimes we may come to Vrindavan. I want to be very peaceful. I don't want anybody to bother me. I go to Vrindavan. But in Vrindavan, you will find many monkeys who will, who will bother you and will take your Japa Mala sometime, Japa bit back. 
thinking that it's bananas. <laughs> Whatever they think, I don't know what they think, but they may come and take, take the, the, the bit back. So we cannot, anywhere we go in this world, we cannot find external peace. Peace can be found only internally in pure devotional service to the Lord. There is no other source of peace. It is not, not possible. And here we see that the Lord is telling Lord Narsim Hadef, okay, you don't want any blessing? Now you stay. You stay, you stay here and now you become the king of your family, of the demons. So those who want big opulence, like Srila Prabhupada explains, materialistic people build big cities with big opulences. Now they are building these robots who speak, like they have this one in, in uh, Arabia Saudi or wherever, and this robot who can speak and communicate with robotics. Uh, some of you maybe may have studied this thing. Here in India it's very popular in universities. I know some devotees who studied robotics. So materialistic people more or less remain like robots because they are devoid of life. When there is no devotional service, the person more or less behaves like a robot and it's time to enjoy, find happiness in this material world in many different ways but they can enjoy it only for a few years, Srila Prabhupada says. Maximum 100 years. I read that there, there were uh, the average of people who are more than 100 years old in the world is approximately 7,500 people. Very big exception, who go beyond 100 years. And if they go beyond, it's not a great blessing because you cannot enjoy anything. You even don't remember where you are. So you can have everything. You maybe have become very wealthy, but you don't have the energy to be able to experience the so-called happiness of those things. But then in the case of Prahlad Maharaj, he didn't want anything, but then the Lord said, okay, you don't want anything, no, you prove it, you stay. I mean, of course, the Lord is telling Prahlad Maharaj, he is showing by the example of his pure devotee that the devotee is ready to do anything for the Lord. And that sometimes the Lord will do things that we do not necessarily plan. And many times these things, as Srimati Kunti Devi explains in, the, in he, her beautiful prayers, these things are vidambanam, bewildering, very, very difficult to understand. It is bewildering. How oh, the Lord sometimes, generally speaking, the Lord protects his devotees. And Srimati Kunti Devi expresses her gratitude. You have helped us in so many ways. You have protected us always. You have protected me more than you protected your mother. You always consider each devotee, what the devotee is going through, and you always, you always will give the devotee whatever he or she needs in his life. Krishna is always uh, there for his devotee. But then it is inexplicable how come that Krishna allows that Draupadis and Subhadra's children are killed. They are pure devotees. They, they are his associates. But still the Lord allows their children to be killed. This is Vidambanam, it is bewildering. So the Lord takes decisions for each devotee according to what the devotees need to go through to become purified. Or in the case of Shuddha Bhaktas, pure devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, to teach something to the world, to teach the world 
that my devotee doesn't want anything and he will get everything both in the spiritual world and in the material world. As it is said sometimes, the best of both worlds. I remember when I was serving at Bhaktivedanta College in Radhadesh, one devotee wanted to make the uh, marketing of the college and he thought of a slogan. I don't think we, ne we never use it, but he wanted to put the best of both worlds. Come to Bhaktivedanta College, you will get the best of both worlds, meaning you will get Krishna consciousness and you will get also uh, a university education which was accredited, that was kind of the concept. So pure devotees will get the best of both worlds, even if they, if they don't want anything in the material world. But the Lord many times will give it to them, like he did in the case of Prahlad Maharaj and in the case of Dhruva Maharaj. Uh, finding such pure devotees is very difficult uh, not easy. And we find in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam the verse uh, Muktanam Apisiddha Nam Narayana Parayana uh, Prasantana Prasantana Sudur Sudur Lava Prasantatma Kotishwa Pi Mahamuni that to find among many liberated souls to find pure devotees of the Lord is very difficult. And of course here uh, the verse is referring to those who are situated at the level of Baba Bhakti, not those who are the practicing sadhana. Or that will be an explanation, it could be said also, to find someone who accepts Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very extraordinary. This is one, one meaning. It is true. There are not, men, not so many sadhakas who practice Uttama Bhakti in this way, following the disciplic succession of Shuddha Bhaktas. But generally speaking, when, when the, the mention is given that someone who is peaceful, completely peaceful, must be at the stage, at least at the stage of Nishta, but generally speaking will be at the stage of Shuddha Bhakti and then liberation becomes insignificant. Moksha laguta krit. The devotee does not desire anything. But others who practice sadhana, we may say it, but we may not be there. Like in one occasion, two disciples of Srila Prabhupada told him, Srila Prabhupada, we want to come birth after birth to serve the Sankirtan movement. And do you remember what Srila Prabhupada told them? Anyone who remembers? Don't make me come back. Don't make me come back, good. Also, also uh, that will be one answer in one occasion. In another occasion, Srila Prabhupada said, do not come back to this material world. It is too dangerous place. Please do not come back. Srila Prabhupada could see they are sadhakas. They are too weak. If they con come back, I may have to come back. So please do not make, com do not may make me come back. And don't come back yourself because this place is very dangerous. You may not be able to survive it. And therefore, Pralat Maharaj a Mahabhagavat from the greatest caliber is praying to the Lord, please give me the blessing to never develop material desires. Because in this world, it is very easy to become polluted. We find examples in the, in the Bhagavatam of Shuddha Bhaktas who had to come back due to a slight Aparada, slight offense. The examples, the classical examples, according to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur analysis, are Bharata Maharaj and 
uh, Maharashtri Taketu. According to Chakri, Ch Chakravarti Thakur's estimation, uh, Bharata Maharaj was situated in Baba Bhakti. But because he uh, went alone to find too much peace, went to practice devotional service alone, according to Srila Prabhupada in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, this is considered an offense to think, maybe not thinking consciously, I don't, I, I, I don't say that Parata Maharaj was consciously thinking, I, I'm very advanced, I go, I go alone. It was very, 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 very subtle, practically imperceptible, an unwilling offense. But the Sadhu Sangha of the devotees was undermined by going to practice devotional service alone. And by practicing devotional service alone, his bath of protecting the orphan deer, he was a king previously, so he had the bath of protecting, came back when there was a need to give protection. Had he be with a group of had he been with a group of devotees, they could have shared taking care of the deer. They could have warned him, Don, please, you are getting distracted. This is becoming too much. We know you are very advanced, but please don't. Uh, let, we can take care of the deer. Or we will uh, arrange something and you can focus on your, on your devotional service. In the case of uh, Chittaketu Maharaj, according to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he was situated in Prema Bhakti. And he committed an offense, which was actually, he just cracked a joke, he just laughed. And he didn't mean to offend anybody. He was just a happy fellow. He was laughing, Lord Shiva with Parvati Devi on, on his lap, speaking kata, this is out of range. And, and he didn't mean to undermine Lord Shiva. And therefore, nor Lord Shiva nor the sages took offense. But inspired by the Lord, Parvati Devi took offense and cursed him to become a demon. And he took the curse. Like Prahlad Maharaj took the blessing of the Lord and the wish of the Lord, now you rule for until the end of the period of Manu. Not just a few years, but until the end of the period of Manu. Can you imagine that the Lord tells you, you stay here serving me until the end of the Vaivasvata Manu. Presently we are in the rule of Vaivasvata Manu. You stay here until the end. How will you feel about that? Well, some may say, I'm happy, I have uh, the end. But some will say, too many lifetimes. I would like to finish, I have come to Vrindavan to finish with this material world. I don't want anything to do with anything in this world. So, Prahlad Maharaj accepted it, Chittaketu Maharaj accepted the curse. And he begged forgiveness. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. But I take, the, I take what you have said. This is the wish, the will of the Lord. And then he became the big demon, Vritra, Vritra Sura, very powerful demon who had to preach Indra Dev. And the demigod had the consciousness, the material consciousness, and the demon had Krishna consciousness. This is another teaching we find in the Bhagavatam. Sometimes things are not black and white, are very much mixed up. It is not something external, it is internal. And then Lord Shiva told Parvati Devi, uh, you shouldn't have cursed him. You see, he's a pure devotee of the Lord. And the glories of the pure devotees, Narayana Parasarve, Nakutaschana Bipyati, Sabarga Pavarga Narakeshu, Apituli Arta Darshina. Pure devotees of the Lord, they accept 
they are happy in any condition of life as long as they can serve the Lord. For them, it is the same as Varga to go to the heavenly, heavenly planets, Apa Varga, the liberated condition of life, or uh, Naraka, a hellish condition of life. They, they do not fear anything because they know they are always connected to the Lord. They are living with Krishna. And therefore, when they live with Krishna, they are very, very happy. They don't need anything else. Of course, for the majority of us, we wish one day we can come to that. And this is why we come to Vrindavan, to cultivate, to cultivate or to rekindle, reactivate such desire. And also we come to charge batteries so that we can go back and distribute the good news in every town and village of the world. And those of you who are permanent residents of Brindavan, I also, I did that last year and, and please don't mind that I insist. I'm a bit, it's my dharma to insist. To, so those of you who are permanently in Brindavan, remember the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Bharate bumite hoila manusya jammayar, jamma sartaka kori kara kara upakara. So sometimes go out of Vrindavan and preach and follow the example of our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. I insist we need to develop a training program for Indian preachers who preach in the West and who do it properly. Meaning, do it properly mean, don't preach only to the Indians, also preach to the Indians, but preach successfully to the Westerners, to the locals, and help the temples that need help. There are many temples that need help and need preachers. And okay, yeah, there are many concerns about that, we may not be able to do it so easily, and it's very difficult to understand the crazy Western mentality. Of course, India is also becoming as crazy as the West, so in that sense, there is not too much difference. It's catching up, isn't it? You go to the big cities and everything is catching up, so it's not. So, we need to find formulas together, uh, all all types of devotees, how to successfully spread the Krishna consciousness movement and successfully meaning having a powerful impact on the world, not an impact that we just celebrate at all, in our own little bubble, but that the leaders of the world are calling upon devotees for advice in taking important decisions in the world. We need to come to that level. It's like another dimension. Srila Prabhupada was not thinking small, and many times he, he said that uh, if I have any, uh, any def de defect, he expressed it like that, is that I, I cannot think small. I always think big. And we have the book that was published by uh, Shyamasundar Prabhu, Chasing Rhinos with the Swami. How many of you have read this book? I highly recommend it. I read it recently, highly recommend it. Please read it. And Srila Prabhupada will say, uh, uh, if, even if you feel unqualified, do not worry, Krishna will help you. Whatever, we cannot do it, Krishna will help us. We need to think big, big and work uh, hard and practice also a strong sadhana and having very good sadhu sangha, a balance of good sadhana and, and working hard for the mission of Lord Chaitanya, working hard meaning uh, preaching, spreading the message of the Lord in so many different ways according to our personal abilities and 
and then Krishna will help us somehow, one, one way or other, we'll be able to succeed in the mission. And if we die in the endeavor, like Jatayu in the Ramayana, he was killed, no problem. The Lord will take care of us. So it's as, it is as good as having succeeded if we die in the endeavor. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If you like to ask questions or make comments, we have a few. It's almost time, but we have a few minutes. I have seen that other speakers sometimes go a bit, go a bit longer. And we're in Vrindavan, and Vrindavan is flexible. Things can be flexible. Comments or questions? There is mic for so that others can listen or for those that work. He was born to kill the, kill the demigods because he had committed an offense. He had been born for that, for fighting. But then he, externally he was fighting and creating great havoc. But internally he was always thinking of his Lord. And he was hoping that Indra Dev will free him from his demon-like body. And actually he preached to Lord Indra. To how, he told him how, he, how, how to kill him. He wanted, please don't be afraid, uh, kill me. So, so sometimes it happens that someone may appear to be a bad person, but inside is not that bad. It's, it's a, uh, an advanced devotee. But externally the person, according to his psychophysical nature, has a temper and appears a person a bit rude. But in his heart is a pure devotee. So he had that nature by, uh, it was the will of the Lord that he had to take that little reaction of the offense, but because he was situated in Prema Bhakti and there was no ninda, no malice in his offense, quote offense, therefore he was able to remember the Lord. But yet his temper was there, and he, he, was, he had been created to fight the demigods. Is that okay? Any other questions or comments? Chasing rhinos with the Swami. And what Shyamasundar Prabhu shares are his experiences of how Srila Prabhupada will always chase the rhinos. Many of you will remember that metaphor used by Srila Prabhupada. If you go to hunt, go to hunt a rhino, rhino zero. Because if you don't, do not succeed, they will say, okay, it, it's too difficult to capture a rhino. But if you succeed, everybody will be so happy and will applaud. And, uh, so think big always and go for something big. Of course, do it with intelligence. Like, for example, Shyamasundar Prabhu, following Srila Prabhupada's desire, went for the Beatles, for the best of the time. And actually, they, they, he became a very close friend of George Harrison. And we have the Bhakti Vedanta Manor, and George Harrison paid the first printing of the Krishna book, $19,000, a lot of money at the time, because Shyamasundar Prabhu went for the Rhinos. And Srila Prabhupada was 
pushing him for going for the rhinos and will tell him, Krishna will help you. Like Mahatma Prabhu the other day referred to that occasion that Srila Prabhupada told uh, Shema Sundar, Krishna will help you. And it happened that a, a storm took place at the right moment when George Harrison was getting angry because Shema Sundar had asked him something he didn't feel like giving. He wanted to give voluntarily. He didn't want to give force or because he was pushed. But then, then a big a big thunderbolt touched the building and the lights went off and there was a big silence in the room and when the lights came up the smile of George was going from ear to ear very bright smile and told Shema Sundar Prabhu uh, how much uh, I have to give after this after this, what, what do you want me to say? So the Lord demonstrated again and again to those who dedicated their life to the mission in extreme ways how he's always helping. If we, if we take risk for Krishna, Krishna will help us. This is his promise. And this is his pure devotee's promise, our founder Acharya's promise. So we should take risk for Krishna. We shouldn't be shy in taking risk. Of course, it should be intelligent risk, not crazy risk. But, in, but we should do it and Krishna will help us. And the flavor in the heart is very pleasant, very inspiring when we take a risk for serving the mission because we know that uh, we are pleasing the Lord and his pure devotee by performing such risky service. When we are in our comfort zone, okay, we may be happy, but it's not the same. I'll read the translation again and we end here. Thank you very much. Uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Prahlad, a devotee like you never desires any kind of material opulences, either in this life or in the next. Nonetheless, I order you to enjoy the opulences of the demons in this material world, acting as their king until the end of the duration of time occupied by Manu. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Granta Raj Srimat Bhagavatam ki jai, Samaveta Gaur Bhaktavrinda ki jai, Nittai Gaur Premanande.